This right here is the Zima Cube Pro. It is an $1,100 NAS with six drive bays, four NVMe slots, a 10 core Intel CPU, 10 gig networking built in, all the expansion you could ever want. And in a chassis that allows you to install whatever operating system you'd like on there. It looks perfect. However, it fried four of my hard drives and therefore I do not think I'm gonna be able to recommend this to most people. All right, so before we get started with this review, I wanna disclose that Zemi Cube did send this to us for free and it just actually showed up one day. They didn't even tell us that they were sending it to us. They sent it to our old address, whole thing, but they did send it to us for free and I have been in contact with their support about this issue and I am not the only one. This NAS by specs is awesome and I really want to love this thing. It is incredibly expandable. It's got RGB, it's got pretty much everything a home lab NAS wants, except for the fact that whatever SATA connection they're using is subject to frying hard drives. If it was just me, I would say I got a flawed unit. Maybe they sent me one pre-production or something like that, but I have found other posts from people who have had the exact same issue. They are currently investigating it. And I did reach out to their support and told them about it. And they said, we've heard about this issue, try different hard drives. And that is currently where I'm at. So I feel comfortable giving this review. This unit's predecessor was the Zima Cube, not Pro, this one is the Pro. And it had a lot of very similar, really solid options. It had a ton of NVMe ports. It had a ton of networking options. It had a lot of options. However, once reviewers got their hands on it, they realized that the CPU and motherboard setup that they had was sharing all of the PCIe lanes between all those devices. So while it had all this capability, there were not not enough lanes to actually get that data through. And so this is what they built, a unit with theoretically no compromises. This thing has massive PCIe lanes, and so it should be incredibly fast. And when I install NVMe drives in here and TrueNAS, it is insanely fast. Built-in 10 gigabit networking worked beautifully right off the bat. TrueNAS was able to install directly on it, no problems whatsoever. But the problem is, when I installed these IronWolf hard drives, which I have used for years for different test benches, into the unit, my first knowledge was it just would not boot. I turned it on, it just would not do anything. The light flashed for about three seconds and it wouldn't do anything. So I'm debugging it, trying to figure out what's going on. And then eventually I realized when the hard drives are plugged in, it's not booting. So finally figure that out, plug them in. And that's where I was able to test this thing on out. And it worked great with TrueNAS. I was able to install it and I was really looking forward to a server I could use as a TrueNAS test bench. Then, I went to plug my drives back into my test bench, my Synologies that I do all my tutorials in, and now the Synologies will not find these drives either. So it looks like somehow or another, these specific hard drives are getting fried by the SATA port on the back of these things. I have no clue what is happening. All I did was I found that other people on the internet are having the same issue and Zima Cube themselves are aware of the issue. So I know it's not isolated, all the other references were Iron Wolves. I do not know why. I don't know why Iron Wolves are any different than anything else. It could just be happenstance, but all of the issues that I did find where people were reporting, not just that it would not boot, but also that the drives then were broken afterwards were Iron Wolf hard drives, specifically the non-pro models. The two letter moniker is the VN. That is as far as I've been able to get with research, I've not been able to find anything about differences between the pro and the non-pro in terms of like a five volt versus 12 volt pin, both should work. I do not know what is happening. And I'm not saying that it's 100% Zima Cube's fault. Obviously, if only one hard drive brand is doing it, once again, from my limited research and the people who are able to find with this issue, it might not be Zima Cube alone. But I can guarantee you something. I have used these specific drives on probably 15 different NAS units that have come through this office throughout the years. These have been with me, literally two of these were the original two hard drives I bought on my DS718 Plus. 
and I have not had any trouble with them in any other systems before. So that is where we are at with this thing. It has incredible potential. I really want boxes like this to become more mainstream. This is truly that unit without compromises. It's got a wicked fast CPU in there, tons of NVMe ports, built-in 10 gigabit networking, space for a GPU or add-in expansion cards. It has the entire bundle for a home lapper's dream. I was really excited when I got this thing in the mail because I wanted to use it as my new test bench for spinning up TrueNAS projects because it is finally a small, easy package that I can put on a desk when I'm filming and show people and be able to use as a test bench. I think that is a great market and there's not a lot of stuff out there that is this high performance and really is not trying to shove their own operating system down your throat. It is really a NAS. They do have their own operating system on there that you can use. But if I were you, I would probably install TrueNAS and that's what I did on here. The problem is I just can't recommend any device that is frying even 1% of hard drives, especially NAS drives that are in theory designed to go in a NAS. So because of that, I just cannot recommend this. The problem is to hit the price point for this unit, Ice Whale, the company who owns Zima Cube, clearly had to do something shady with the SATA connections and or power supplies because you really should not be able to just fry hard drives unless your SATA connection is really, really, really shady and is clearly doing something wrong. So for the second part of this video, I'm gonna go through and talk about what the issue is and the things I found about it. But for the review section, it's awesome. It's got a ton of power under the hood and I would have given it probably four and a half stars if we did not have the SATA port issue. But with that SATA port issue, unless it is resolved and figured out, I'm not going to be able to recommend this unit until it is fully addressed and make sure not gonna happen again. These things do happen, but that's where you need to have really good support and communication. But as you're gonna see in the second part of this video, I don't think that has happened and we have not gotten many updates at all from this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up those forum posts on my laptop and we're gonna go through what the situation currently is. All right, so first, my email to them. I email and say, hey, I found that anytime a hard drive is plugged in, or at least these specific hard drives are plugged in, it will not even boot at all. It just turns on for a second and then stops working. Then I found that, hey, by the way, the drives are now fried and they no longer work in any other systems. And this was Zima's support. They say, first, regarding the issue of the device not booting up, we currently believe that this may be related to the hard drive. Recently, we have received many cases about the incompatibility of this brand of hard drives with the device, and they can all be used normally after replacing the hard drives. So they are outright saying here that for whatever reason, they're getting a lot of cases of Iron Wolf hard drives having this exact same problem. And I was able to find somebody who posted on the forums the exact same issue and happened with multiple drives, not just one. So this guy went through and bought a new drive for his new server, plugged it in, it wouldn't post, it wouldn't boot. So he does what I did and assumed that the hard drive was bad. He then goes through, tests it on a different system, and it doesn't work there as well. So he says, okay, this drive must be bad. He does the exact same thing again with a new drive that was just RMA and finds that yes, any hard drives, or at least any of these Iron Wolf drives that he plugs into the Zima Cube Pro will not boot and eventually get fried. So this is the exact same issue that I had and Zima Cube does not appear to be very responsive about this. First off, he says he emailed support, did not hear back. And then finally, they reply to this forum post and they say, at present, the short circuit equipment is busy testing other brands of hard drives. And that is the only answer we get all the way back from October 30th. And so it looks like that this is an issue and I don't think they know what's going on. At least they've not informed us of anything. So looking through, his drive models are eight terabyte Iron Wolf standard models. So that is the same thing I had, except I had the four terabyte versions. So I've got the ST4000 VN006. That VN stands for Iron Wolf, as far as I can tell. 
and then the NE stands for Iron Wolf Pros. Stat-wise, I could not find anything that would differentiate these drives from other Iron Wolf Pros or anything like that. So I do not know why these drives happen to be different. They both take 12 and 5 volt power supplies, which is often one of those issues, and it seems like both of these should be able to handle it. But for whatever reason, this unit seems to fry Iron Wolf hard drives. If you are still interested in getting this unit, what I would really recommend doing is making sure you do not get Iron Wolf hard drives with it just until there is officially a fix out. And if I were you, I'd probably hold off on buying the unit until they actually make the update and say, hey, this happened, we fixed it, turned out to be a bad SATA connection or something like that. It does seem to only be limited with Iron Wolf hard drives as far as I can tell. So if you do try another NAS brand of drive, you probably will be okay. But for me, it is not something I would recommend risking. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. This unit has so much potential. I think it could be an awesome home lab server at a really great price and really giving all the power you could possibly need in home lab for a very nice and clean package. But until this issue gets fixed, I am unable to recommend this unit whatsoever. All right, I will be absolutely posting update down in the comments below if there is any one of them. So check that out and have a good one. Bye.